Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Turn your King James Bibles to the book of Jeremiah. This is the commentary, chapter 17. I don't think there's going to be much commentary on this one. But we shall see. Verse 1. The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. Interesting. A diamond is the hardest non-man-made substance in the known world. So God is saying the, the, the sin, the, the pen of iron has the point, uh, and it's written with a diamond. So you know it's going to scratch in there pretty good. It is graven upon the table of your heart and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst their children remember their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. Well, when you start talking about groves and trees and high hills, you're talking about worshiping the fallen angels, Satanism, basically. Just remember, on June 6, 1966, the Church of Satan was founded in the United States, I believe in Los Angeles. Think about that. Verse 3. O my mountains in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not why is that well because they're going to be carried away captive slaves for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. See, these people have earned their place in hell. See, hell was not created for man. The Lord created hell for the devil and his angels. But hey, if, you know, if people really want to worship the fallen angels and be with them well god will god will honor their request hey you want to be with the fallen angels no problem you could visit them you could be a permanent house guest with them no problem verse five thus saith the lord cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Very interesting. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart uh, departeth from the Lord. Is your faith in the Lord? Or do you trust in man? You know, I read this verse and what do I think of? Well, you got to realize I live in the United States. Uh, 
I guess uh, when I read this, I'm thinking of all the people that are disappointed that Donald Trump didn't win so that he could save America. Little do they know, there's not a lot of difference between Donald and Biden. One, you go to hell slowly, and the other, you go to hell quick. I mean, Donald's not a Christian. I mean, granted, at least, uh, you know, his pick for the Secretary of Education is not a, uh, well, let's just say uh, the angels that went to go see Lot, where Lot lived, where the Lord rained down fire and brimstone, yeah. At least uh, Donald's pick for that wasn't uh, one of them. I'm being very cautious with my words because one more strike and my channel's gone. I got two strikes right now. So I got to be very, very careful about words that I use. Oh, yeah. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Oh, yeah. You know how many people that go to church that absolutely fawn all over Donald Trump like he's a Christian? People, he has never, never acknowledged being a Christian. Absolutely never. And maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Well, those of you that trust in politicians or man to save you well verse 6 applies for he shall be like the uh, hearth in the desert and shall not see when good cometh but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited what's a parched place dry a parched, dry place in the wilderness, in a salt land and not inhabited. Do you know what grows in a salt land? Nothing. Nothing. And why is it not inhabited? Because nothing can grow there. But for the Christians, the real deal, not those that trust in politicians, verse 7, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Verse 9. See, those that trust in the Lord are going to be like a tree planted by a river. And even when the rest of the land is in a drought, well, that tree is going to have enough water to get by and is going to yield fruit. Because Christians are supposed to yield fruit. But verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And the answer to that is the Lord. You always hear people say, Oh, follow your heart. Follow your heart. Yeah. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. As the partridge, as the partridge a bird, sitteth on eggs, and hatcheth them not. So he that getteth riches, and not by right. 
Oh, yeah. You know, it's like the uh, mama bird sits on the eggs, but they never hatch. No fruit. Wasted time. Is like unto a person that got riches, but they didn't get them the right way. They, they got them the wrong way. So he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end shall be a fool. What good are riches in this life when you die? You're going to leave them behind. You know, I was a volunteer chaplain at the South Florida Veterans Cemetery and let me tell you what. I never saw a casket with a trailer behind it. Ever heard the expression, you can't take it with you when you go? Well, you can't. And at your end shall be a fool. What good is gaining the whole world if you lose your soul and go to the wrong place? Well, Jesus asked that question, Mark 8, 36. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Matthew 16, 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Good question. So he that getteth riches and not by right shall leave them in the midst of his days and at his end shall be a fool. Remember the para, uh, the story, story, not parable, story of the rich man and Lazarus? What did the rich man's riches do for him after he died? Do you know that story? He asked Abraham for Lazarus to come and dip the tip of his finger in water and to cool the rich man's tongue, for he was tormented in the flame. Verse 12. Now, I believe this is for believers. A glorious high throne from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. O oh Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from thee shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Didn't Jesus say he was, uh, talk to the Samaritan woman at the well about living waters? Living waters is talked about in the book of Revelation. Oh, yeah. Jesus said in John 7, 38, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. How about John? Chapter 4, I guess we'll read from verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. For he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well 
was there. Do you know there was a well there that Jacob had, evidently Jacob had the well dug. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now why is that? Well, Judah was the southern kingdom, and northern Israel, whose capital was Samaria, was the northern kingdom. They split during the days of Solomon's son. And in Jeremiah 3.8, God had divorced Israel, but not Judah. Jeremiah 3.8, God divorced Israel. So the Jews, Judah, I should say, probably thought that they were better than those heathens to the north. Then saith the woman of Samaria, Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Listen to this carefully, verse 12. Art thou greater than our father Jacob? Now who was Jacob? Jacob was one of the, he was the father of the 12 tribes. God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Did you know that? Jacob's name was changed by the Lord himself to Israel. This woman says, Art thou greater than our father Jacob? This woman was an Israelite. Just as much as anybody in Judah. She had ju probably just as much Israelite blood in her, but she was of the northern divorced tribes. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Uh, did Jesus correct her and say, no, 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 you're not, you're not of Jacob, Israel. You're not an Israelite. He didn't say that to her. No. Verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Wow. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands. Huh. I wonder if 
a lot of divorces there. Or was she a widowed five times? I don't know. That sounds kind of strange. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, in that sayest, saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. The true Jews, not the synagogue of Satan, Revelation 2 9. But the hour cometh, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah is cometh. Oh yeah, I know the Messiah is coming. I know that, that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. So what about this living waters? Well, let's touch briefly in the book of Revelation. 7, 17. For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Okay. Revelation 21, 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. See, that Alpha and Omega, Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and Omega is the last. Well, your Hebrew roots deceivers will try to make you think, Oh, no, that's wrong. It's not the Alpha and Omega. It's the Olive Tov. No, it's the Alpha and the Omega. The New Testament was written in Greek. Guess what the second letter of the Greek alphabet is? Beta. The first letter is Alpha. The second letter is Beta. Alpha Beta. Alphabet. That's where we get the word alphabet. But uh, your Hebrew roots deceivers, they don't want you to, uh-uh, no, they want you to go back to Hebrew. They're going to try to get you to do circumcision and keep the Sabbath and all kinds of little rituals that Jesus condemned. Don't fall for it. New Testament was written in Greek. Paul went to Greece, Greek cities, and taught the gospel, the cross of Christ. The blood of Christ. Paul didn't preach circumcision and Sabbath keeping. He preached the gospel, the cross, and the blood. Revelation 21, 6. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Revelation 21, I'm sorry, Revelation 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. Revelation 22, 17. And the Spirit and the Bride said, Come. 
And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Amen to that. Let's go back to Jeremiah 17 and verse 13. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake me shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. Behold, they say unto me, Where is the word of the Lord? Let it come now. As for me, I have not hastened from being a pastor to follow thee. Neither have I desired the woeful day thou knowest. That which came out of my lips was right before thee. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. Boy, truer words could not be spoken today. He's saying, basically saying, Lord, be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. Verse 18, let them be confounded that persecute me, but let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed, but let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Ooh, I get shivers just rethinking about that. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. What is double destruction? Uh, well, <laughs> think about it. Destroy their body and destroy their soul and spirit in hell. Well, let's take a look at this. The day of evil, right? Revelation 14 and verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Now, I'm not repeating myself. It actually says this twice. Babylon is fallen, is fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. I'm not repeating that. The Bible does. Revelation 18.2 And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. See, Babylon fell once physically, and then it fell again spiritually. Double destruction. Destroy the body, destroy the soul and spirit. Think about it. Double destruction. Don't believe me? How about Matthew 10, 28? Jesus speaking. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Soul and body in hell. Double destruction. That's some harsh stuff. 
Back to Jeremiah 17. 17. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. Let them be confounded that persecute me. But let not me be confounded. Let them be dismayed. But let not me be dismayed. Bring upon them the day of evil and destroy them with double destruction. Oof. Thus saith the Lord unto me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, whereby the kings of Judah come in, and by the which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem, and say unto them, Hear ye the word of the Lord, ye kings of Judah, and all Judah, and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem that enter in by these gates. Thus saith the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it in by the gates of Jerusalem. Neither carry forth a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, neither do ye any work, but hallow ye the Sabbath day, as I commanded your fathers. Now Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. But the point is, we were supposed to take a day and reflect upon the works of the Lord, not to try to make money. You know, that's what it was all about. But hallow ye the Sabbath day as I commanded your fathers. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but made their necks stiff, that they might not hear, nor receive instruction. And it shall come to pass, if ye diligently hearken unto me, saith the Lord, to bring in no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but hallow the Sabbath day to do no work therein. Then shall there enter into the gates of the city kings and princes sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and this city shall remain forever. See, one of the things they did was they were more interested in making money on the Sabbath day than they were the things of God. I mean, it's not necessarily, I don't know, my opinion. It's, you know, if you're more interested in making money than the Lord on the Sabbath day, it's a spiritual problem, really. Think about it. Verse 26. And they shall come from the cities of Judah, and from the places about Jerusalem, and from the land of Benjamin, and from the plain, and from the mountains, and from the south, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices, and meat offerings, and incense, and bringing sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord. But if ye will not hearken unto me to hallow the Sabbath day, and not to bear a burden, even entering in at the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then will I kindle a fire in the gates thereof, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. Oh boy, doesn't sound like the Lord's very pleased, does it? Nope. But those that trust in the Lord, the Lord will be a protector in the day of evil. I hope you enjoyed this reading and study, and I hope it makes sense. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.